Um, my name is Spencer Job, and uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit tonight about um, this thing that I just kind of been tinkering with um, called, I, <laughs> I'm calling it cool, which is, you know, kind of ridiculous, but that's what it is. Um, and basically, it's a client-side HTML preprocessor. So um, why did I do this? Uh, mostly for fun. I just kind of wanted to see if I could do it. I um, wanted some custom elements, and I wanted custom attributes, and uh, I wanted to be able to redefine existing tags and attributes. Uh, web components, um, you know, that's, I think, the future where this is going, but it doesn't necessarily run in all browsers. And X tags is also a solution, but um, kind of wanted really wide support. Um, so this is exactly how I do it. Um, basically, the HTML body becomes a giant string of characters just by essentially commenting out the entire body. Uh, and then that string of characters is parsed and another DOM tree is created in JavaScript. Uh, this isn't fast at all, by the way, but that's essentially what's going on. Um, so, so you walk through the tree and you create each element. And um, part of what Cool does is it allows you to define custom, um, essentially, creation functions. They're not they're not really constructors, but they're a function that's in, invoked whenever a particular element uh, is encountered. So as it moves through the tree, it says, look, I've got an element here. Is this a standard uh, HTML element? Do I have um, a creation function associated with this? No, I don't. OK, I'm going to just create a normal, say, div tag and move on. Um, but if there's some you know, specific tag that you create, it says, hey, wait a second, I've got a definition for this. Before I, before I move on, I'm going to handle this differently. And it kind of interrupts the, what amounts to the render tree and says, OK, I'm going to uh, render this um, based on a function that the developer provided. Um, and this is essentially what, uh, what it looks like here. Um, this is the... Um, a standard kind of definition here. Um, we're declaring a, an SEMJS tag. Um, its root tag will be a div tag. And anytime that uh, that cool sees SEMJS, like right here, it's going to call this function. It's going to parse all of this stuff here and create a separate node, um, which contains all of the attributes and all of the sub tags and all of that, you know, kind of recursively parsing that down. and and passes that in as a node, and then it creates the base element and passes that back. Uh, and so then you can essentially take whatever was in your custom node and per, you know, whatever you want, assign it back to the real element underneath. Um, and then here, this is just kind of like continuing the render. So what happens here is that the node is then passed back into the rendering engine, and it's re rendered recursively. So you can have other stuff in here. You can have um, you know, other custom tags or other actual HTML tags that will be rendered. If for some reason you wanted to implement something else that wasn't even HTML, maybe you know, so one of your own kind of um, um, you know, um, structures or whatnot, you could put that in here and then not call the render uh, the renderer, and it wouldn't actually try to resolve anything within. Um, this is a very basic example, but uh, hopefully we can run through a couple of demos here um, that I've got. Uh, okay. Um, so here is example one. Uh, you'll notice that you've got this kind of custom HTML nonsense up here. This is basically just letting the, uh, the system know this is, in fact, um, a custom um, element container. So if we run this, um, you'll see there it says hello there. And uh, if we inspect the element, we will see that it's actually a div. Um, but if we look at the source, the source was just the SEMJS. I mean, it's, it's basically kind of like a, a templating system um, to some extent. Let's see here. We'll go to example two real quick. Here in example two, I've taken the definitions and I put them in a, in a JavaScript file. And then within the body, I just have all of these completely custom tags. This is a confirmed tag. You can actually put style in here and then resolve that to your, to your liking inside of the, the definition. And we've got these other tags. There's a question and a yes and a no. Um, here down here, we've got a question, a yes and a no. And then we've got this other thing here. Again, totally you know, randomly created by the user called events. And within here, we've got two pieces of uh, code that will execute um, based on a button click. So if we run this, 
Uh, fingers crossed. There we go. So now we've got our um, our custom um, components here. They're just questions. And if we click on, I think it's this one. There we go. We get our test. Uh, so if we look at, let's go back here. If we look at example two, hopefully that's, is that visible? You guys can see that okay? It's coming in good? Okay. Um, so this is actually what's going on here is that the custom element is, is coming through. Um, the nodes that are created by uh, cool have kind of like get element by tag name, get element by ID uh, equivalents, but I didn't want to write all that out, so they're just by tag and by ID. So here you can call the node, in this case it's confirm, and we can get all of the question uh, tags within. So what we're doing is we're just kind of capturing those uh, elements. And, um, and if there's an event element, then we're going to actually grab the text um, for the code. And then down here, we are actually right here, we're actually creating just regular old HTML elements and, um, and appending them to um, the, the source element. Now, behind the scenes, after this function gets called, the element itself is appended back to uh, the body. But essentially, um, all of this stuff boils down into um, this guy right here. So you don't actually have to write all that stuff out. You can just kind of you know, define whatever you want and do with it whatever you want. OK, so the third example is kind of interesting. The third example here, um, we're going to be doing, um, some, there's some custom tags here. It's an article. It's got a, a title, a subtitle, and some text, you know, ipsum lorem. Um, but here's an interesting tag. This is something that I was just toying around with and ended up working out pretty cool. So basically, it's an async tag. And what happens is those function definition um, functions, uh, when, they're, when they're invoked, when it sees async and says, OK, I got to go get the async definition, that function itself um, sets uh, a timeout to kind of like continue its own processing. So this, this second article doesn't actually get processed until after a certain number of seconds. And that's what's happening down here. We get the node, which is the custom element, and we're getting the timeout uh, attribute, which we set to two, I think, in the example. Multiply that by 1,000, we get the number of milliseconds. Here we're setting some basic CSS, et cetera. And then here we've actually got a set timeout function that is called 2,000 milliseconds later. And at that point, we, um, we replace whatever the loading tag is, the loading content here. And we continue rendering the internals of the async element, which happens to be an article, a subtitle, and text. So when this executes, you, you get to see this kind of interesting effect where the first thing loads immediately, and then a couple seconds later, the other thing loads. Uh, and then the third, the third async tag was just loading um, some JavaScript. And that was just kind of to prove that you can essentially asynchronously load or load on a delay um, actual uh, script tags. So like if you look down here, you can see the script tag. And so after three, sec three seconds after this thing loads, you know, this thing is, is executed, including the insertion of a script tag and all, and all of that goodness. Uh, so that's, that's basically all I've been working on right now. It's still a, a work in progress. I'm not really sure there's a, a solid use case for anything like this, but it was fun. And um, I guess for me, it's a little more interesting than squirrels. Um, but, may, but to some of you, it may not be. Um, Anyway, that's, that's all I had, uh, so it's pretty quick. Um, if you want to look at this code, I, although I don't necessarily recommend it because I'm probably going to go either cry myself to sleep about it or um, change it all, you can go to cooljs.com, and I just put it up there. There's a sample. You can download it. It's also on GitHub. So thanks. You're welcome.